Thank you very much for the very nice introduction. Um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the physics and application of indium selenide and uh, some Van der Waal heat structures based on indium selenide. So I not want to disappoint you. It's not moving, sorry. For some reason, my, ah, okay. So first I will introduce uh, the metal halcogenide indium selenide. And then I'm going to talk about the scanning thermal microscope study on indium selenide layers. So um, as you know that 2D materials, that Van der Waal crystals now is a huge um, different uh, materials. So some are metals, some are semiconductors and some are um, you know, insulators. So the materials I am interested is the 3-6 crystal uh, group. So especially indium selenide, gallium selenide, indium uh, you know, sulfide, uh, gallium sulfide, uh, those are. So these materials are a little bit different uh, uh, you know, from the well-known uh, metal calcogenide, that is uh, molybdenum sulfide, tungsten sulfide, uh, so on. So the indium selenide has a unique electronic band structure. So this, uh, the valence band uh, look like an inverted Mexican hat. And uh, you know that um, um, if you look at the band structure from the bulk to monolayer, you can see um, in a te 10 layer, for example, if you look at then the conduction band minima and in the gamma, uh, you know, um, space and also the valence band minima close to the gamma. But when the layer thickness reduced, then the conduction band still stay at the same place, but the valence band going to move towards the cape point. So when it's, it's become monolayer, actually we are getting the indirect band gap. So this material has um, high electron mobility that we uh, studied from uh, hole effect uh, measurements, you know, quantum hole effect. So this is the first material uh, having a you know, uh, high uh, electron uh, mobility uh, in this 2D material group, 2D semiconductor materials group. You know, the graphene is definitely, that is a semi-metal that has the highest um, electron mobility. But in the semiconductor group, this uh, indium selenide uh, has the higher electron mobility. It's, uh, it has a wide uh, tunable band gap varying uh, by uh, thickness. So you can see from the bulk, uh, when we reduce the thickness, then we can tune from around 1.25 electron volt to two electron volt. So it has a very large uh, tunability. So all these fantastic uh, properties, uh, you know, the indium selenide has. So we are interested uh, to make some hetero structures. So that mechanically exfoliating the layers and stacking with uh, different materials. So in this way, we uh, studied a lot of uh, different hydrostructures. Uh, for example, N-type indium selenide uh, with P-type indium selenide, indium selenide with graphene, indium selenide with boron nitride, and so on. So here, that's one to one to one hydrostructures. Also, we studied Van der Waal, non Van der Waal materials hydrostructures, for example, indium selenide, indium arsenide, indium selenide, cadmium telluride, so on. So, all these uh, you know, um, hydrostructures uh, gave promise for uh, op optical and optoelectronic devices. So, another way to uh, make hydrostructure is uh, oxidizing this indium selenide um, in air. So once we are oxidizing, then we can able to form indium uh, two or uh, uh, you know O three that is the indium oxide layer. So this uh, you know uh, uh, we can make a indium selenide indium oxide uh, hydrojunction. So for example, if I'm taking the P type indium selenide and oxidizes, um, the indium oxide has N type conductivity. So I can make a PN junction. So we studied that, uh, you know, um, it's a light emitting diode uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a promising for photovoltaic um, applications. 
So as this uh, conference more focus on a uh, scanning probe microscope, so um, I'm going to show you the thermal conductivity study we made on indium selenide. So this is the uh, scanning thermal microscope uh, schematic diagram. So we have a um, we, we, we have a probe, so that is actually a thermal probe, and uh, that is a part of the Viston bridge. So in this Viston bridge that we have two uh, known resistor R1 and R2, and R3 is the you know uh, variable resistor. So what happened when we shine the laser, then we are actually uh, locally heating the uh, probe. And uh, you know that uh, probe has a resistance. So uh, one is uh, coming um, closer contact with our material, for example, indium selenide. So here is a zoom, uh, you know, how it's, so when it's become close to, uh, close to the uh, close contact with indium selenide or whatever the material, then what happened that uh, probe going to, uh, you know, uh, transfer or, or lose heat, okay? because uh, contacting um, the heat to the uh, layer. So what happened then the um, you know, resistance of the probe going to change. So that unbalanced this uh, V-stone bridge. So we are going to get the output voltage. So the electric um, you know, power um, due to this um, um, you know, um, the heat transfer is actually can be given by the resistance of the probe times that uh, change in the output voltage. So this is actually proportional to the heat flux uh, going through the sample. So also we have to consider here, the, can be, the output voltage can be influenced by the heat loss from the probe, uh, also uh, you know, um, convection or uh, convention of the, of the heat um, um, you know, uh, in the AR and uh, also. So, um, Okay, we can um, use this uh, thermal scanning microscope just as a AFM mode. So the, uh, here you can see uh, on a uh, silicon dioxide substrate, we exfoliated a lot of uh, indium selenide layers. And this layer has having a partly monolayer part and also uh, you know, the other part is like a phi layer. So you can see in the AFM image that um, uh, you know, the color contrast so, but uh, if you look at the thermal scanning uh, microscopic image, then you can see there is a huge difference in the in the thermal, uh, you know, the output voltage actually we are getting here in the scale. So, um, between uh, the indium selenide layers and the um, you know substrate, there is a huge difference. So, what this means that uh, blue color means the high thermal conductivity, and the you know the orange color or yellow color means that the uh, conductivity, uh, thermal conductivity, less thermal conductivity. So when we just taking the, um, you know, profile across, then you can see, uh, so the voltage difference we are measuring here. So that's actually uh, the thermal conductivity increasing with, you know, that um, voltage difference is uh, decreased. So high thermal conductivity for, um, in this, sorry, silicon dioxide, compared to the uh, indium selenide layer, you can see here. So we uh, are uh, interested to see how this, um, you know, thermal conductivity uh, changing um, with respect to the area of the layers and also the thickness of the layers. So one thing here I need to mention that, um, you know, as uh, these 2D materials having varying th uh, thickness, uh, and varying, uh, you know, um, it can be in a different topological um, topography um, substrate. So really, we need a high resolution, um, you know, um, method to uh, probe this um, thermal conductivity. So here, this scanning thermal microscope give a, a resolution um, down to 50 nanometer. So that you know, having a different boundaries and different. Um, uh, sizes, um, edges. So we definitely need a high uh, resolution, um, you know, like a thermal, uh, method like thermal uh, scanning microscope. 
But the disadvantage here is we can uh, actually, you know, quantitative say that, okay, this is the thermal conductivity because of a lot of uh, this still, uh, this, uh, this uh, microscope in, in, in um, development. Uh, and also here, a lot of way we can, uh, you know, use the, uh, lose the um, uh, heat. Um, but in contrast to the, you know, that traditional uh, Raman uh, microscope to um, uh, measure the uh, thermal conductivity, especially in 2D materials, that Raman uh, spectroscopy is um, resolution, uh, uh, you know, um, optical uh, diffraction uh, due to the uh, diffraction limited. It's uh, the re resolution is really limited. So the, that's the advantage and disadvantage of this technique. So anyway, so um, when you when you when we look at that. Uh, I guess still again, okay, I'm stuck. Okay. So uh, a thermal um, scanning microscope image of a large area. So you can see a lot of um, indium cyanide layers are here. So they, they are in a, a dark uh, orange or reddish color. So it it's means that thermal conductivity is really low uh, compared to the substrate uh, silicon dioxide. But this is actually a um, really surprise for us because the thermal conductivity of the bulk indium selenite is really um, you know, higher than the uh, thermal conductivity of, of silicon dioxide. So here it's uh, two things we have to consider that when we are, uh, you know, these materials having uh, anisotropic uh, uh, conduction that is in plane, having a different uh, thermal conduction, okay, thermal conductivity, and also in the out of plane, uh, different thermal conductivity. So when we are actually reducing the number of thickness, so this actually having a major play uh, on this uh, thermal conduction in these materials. So uh, what we did to understand how the size of these layers, um, you know, actually um, changing or depending on the thermal conductivity. So we, um, the flake area versus um, you know the thermal conductivity we studied. So here we uh, to avoid really thin flake, uh, we took the number of layers uh, is greater than uh, 15 layers. So you can see when is uh, you know uh, the area is uh, larger, is there is no much uh, dependent on the uh, area. But when the area is small, then uh, you know is is really uh, depend on the the thermal conductivity is changing. Okay, going down because this is due to the uh, phonon uh, scattering at the uh, boundary edge of these um, flakes. So here the message is the thermal conductivity is actually decreasing uh, with um, decreasing uh, the area of the flake. So then we um, look at that, uh, you know, just fixing uh, the area um, and look at the how it's changing with the number of layers. So here you can say, uh, see that uh, just we are taking the area uh, greater than or micrometers uh, square, and also we avoided very large uh, flake. So um, um, here you look at the number of layers um, versus the um, you know the delta uh, V out. Okay, so the change in the uh, output voltage. So here you can see that uh, not much change in the very thicker layers or the uh, high number of layers, but it's is really you know changing that the thermal conductivity going down when the layer thickness is uh, going down uh, you know uh, below um, 10, 10 layers so here the thermal conductivity is decreasing with uh, decreasing the number of layers so as i already said so here that uh, we have the anisotropic uh, thermal conductivity that is different uh, you know uh, phonon uh, playing in differently in in the in plane and out of plane so that uh, when the layer thickness uh, reduce, uh, that the uh, you know the due to the eventual gaps we are having that out of plane uh, thermal conductivity is really uh, you know small. So that's making that uh, uh, the explanation why we are getting low thermal conductivity when we are actually uh, reducing the number of layers. Then we um, actually uh, try to compare uh, the measured um, dependence uh, with the theoretically uh, calculated uh, thermal conductivity. 
with a lateral size. So here that uh, uh, square of um, the area we are taking in the x-axis and um, the thermal conductivity uh, theoretically studied. So that's is uh, given in the red dots. So our, um, you know, um, the studied measured value actually uh, well fitting in the, in, in the region. So, so we are doing the, uh, you know, right thing is confirming. So then, um, to avoid or to uh, study the substrate induced, uh, you know, uh, effect in this thermal conductivity. So what we um, done that we pattern uh, arrays of holes on silicon silicon dioxide substrate uh, by electron beam lithography and then uh, reactive plasma etching. So we can get nice uh, arrays of holes. Then transfer the indium selenide uh, layer. So this is uh, nearly. Um, 15 or 12 layer uh, indium selenide over here in the AFM image, you can see. The same, uh, you know, uh, image, uh, same layer is showing here, here is the thermal uh, scanning microscopic image. And if I'm zooming one of this uh, hole, so what happened here is actually, uh, you know, something look like here. Okay, so is, if you are looking at the one hole, then uh, indium selenide just hanging inside uh, by AFM profile, we know that actually it's going in. Okay, hanging and the edges are, you know, stretched. So if you are looking at the thermal uh, scanning microscope that one, um, uh, you know, zoomed uh, um, uh, well, then what uh, we can able to see that outside is, uh, you know, almost a um, little bit uh, reddish. That, so that's the area is actually supported, the indium selenide layer supported by the substrate silicon dioxide. And the inside, the blue color, so that is actually the freestanding indium selenide. Okay, so some we are here. And the edges also be able to see a bright yellow color. So that is the just the edge of the, uh, you know, layer. So initially we thought it's maybe some artifact, but it's not uh, any artifact. Actually, this, uh, this brightness is happening due to the um, strain at the edge of the, uh, you know, well. Um, so that uh, making, you know, different uh, phonon uh, scattering, okay, so reducing the thermal conductivity. So here the message is uh, when the indium selenide is supported by the substrate, then the, actually um, the substrate is playing a role so that thermal conductivity of indium selenide is reducing compared to the unsupported indium selenide layer. So we also able to, uh, you know, uh, make different size of holes and we study. So it's like a three uh, micrometer um, a diameter well and five micrometer diameter well. So we can able to see that thermal conductivity is actually, you know, um, changing with the diameter well. So we even increase, uh, I haven't, uh, you know, results now, but uh, we can confirm that uh, when the layer thickness, um, sorry, the width of the micro well increase, we can able to see that uh, thermal conductivity of the indium selenide is increasing because of, you know, that uh, we are avoiding the uh, scattering uh, or the uh, avoiding the uh, effect from the substrate. So uh, to confirm that, uh, uh, you know, this um, uh, area, that edge of the, uh, the layers at the edge of the well is strained, so we studied the Raman spectroscopy uh, to map, um, you know, the different, uh, two different uh, Raman modes of indium selenide I'm showing here. So this is the Raman uh, map. So here you can see, uh, this is, um, the E is actually uh, showing uh, that the layer outside, uh, you know, silicon dioxide, and actually this is the, uh, you know, layer at the edge. And this is again that inside the blue color. So you can see that uh, pretty much uh, the Raman mode um, inside and outside, uh, you know, it's not changed, but uh, due to the strain at the edge, okay, here, uh, the Raman mode is uh, shifting uh, to, to the uh, red shifting, um, you know, so that's, that's expected um, and confirmed that is uh, due to the strain. So uh, then uh, what we uh, thought, okay, let's um, move this indium selenide uh, on a even lower thermal conductivity substrate like a um, TMMA polymer, okay? 
So we pattern some um, uh, arrays of um, you know pillars using uh, PMMA, okay, PMMA pillars, and then transfer uh, the indium selenide layers on top of it. So here, this area is actually the uh, indium selenide on top of the pillars, PMMA pillars, and the other side of the layer is actually on, on top of the uh, silicon dioxide. So here again, uh, when we zoom one of the area, we can see um, here that uh, we are supported by uh, on top of the pillar, uh, we see uh, high thermal, um, sorry, low thermal conductivity uh, compared to the area, uh, surrounded area just hanging out, okay? The hanging out area or the area touching the silicon dioxide. So you can see that uh, across this uh, profile, uh, we able to see that, okay, this is showing the height anyway. So the thermal conductivity is, uh, you know, just uh, uh, pretty much the same across, uh, you know, different pillars. <clears throat> so, but um, here the reason uh, why we, we, we um, you know, uh, look at different thermal, um, uh, you know, supporting on different uh, thermal conductivity uh, material to see, uh, if we are putting on a lower thermal conductivity material, is the um, um, you know uh, the, the thermal conductivity of indium selenide is reducing, or if we are putting on a higher thermal conductivity material, is the indium selenide uh, uh, you know thermal conductivity increasing? So what we did, uh, we transfer on a, a boron nitrides. As you know, a hexagonal boron nitride has a high high thermal conductivity. So uh, we stuck uh, the you know, exfoliated boron nitride on silicon dioxide and then stamp the indium selenide on this um, boron nitride. But unfortunately, um, uh, you know, we couldn't see uh, very much difference, uh, but um, you know, when the, okay, so here you can clearly see that uh, boron nitride is uh, high thermal conductivity compared to silicon dioxide. But still, the indium selenide thermal conductivity does not increase that much. Okay, so it's, it's a very, um, uh, you know, more or less similar to uh, what we observed that when we put the indium selenide on silicon dioxide, same, uh, you know, um, uh, range of uh, thermal conductivity we observed even when we are putting on a high thermal conductivity uh, um, 2D material substrate. So here it's maybe. Uh, due to some, um, you know, inter interface contamination or uh, lattice mismatch between the uh, hexagonal boron nitride and indium selenide, it's about 37%. Um, so it's a huge lattice mismatch. So still we need to understand a lot of, you know, uh, the phonon uh, transport uh, between this interface. Uh, why uh, when we are putting the indium selenide on top of a, a boron nitride, which has a high thermal conductivity, we initially that, uh, um, you know, assume it, uh, that a thermal conductivity will increase, but it's, it's didn't. So we, we need to um, uh, theoretically ha have a look what's actually happening at the interfaces. So, um, summary. Yep, that's yeah, that's good. At the summary, sorry. Uh, so, um, the imaging capability of scanning thermal microscope and uh, its high spatial resolution have enabled us to investigate, you know, how the surface topo uh, topography uh, of a two D layer uh, layer layer uh, indium selenide um, flake and its supported substrate influence the thermal response. And then, uh, you know, actually, indium selenide flake with different size and uh, non uniform topography, we analyze um, the thermal conductivity, and it always shows it's a lower thermal conductivity. So, here the advantage is that uh, the indium selenide has low thermal conductivity, and also, as I initially showed, it has a high electron uh, mobility or so electron conductivity. So, it's really suitable for a thermoelectric device. Yeah, thank you for um, our collaborators, and uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much uh, for a very nice presentation, Ilanti. Um, we are pretty short in time, but nevertheless, there's already one question in the Q&A, which I think you have answered. The, uh, an anonymous watcher has basically raised a question. I would expect to see some artifact on the edges due to increased contact area. And in fact, you did. That's exactly what you showed in the second part, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. So yes, he's totally right. He's really thinking the same direction. Mm -hmm. If there is a short, a short, very quick question, please, of somebody's at the moment, then please raise your hand or just open your microphone yourself, if you can. But then um, ask the question. Otherwise, I would postpone everybody, including me, actually, to ask questions to you within the discussion table, which uh, should then follow up at the end of this session. I see Mariam has a question. Please, Mariam, open the new uh, microphone. So Mariam is asking, did you see, did you use the same point of interest for investigating with different methods like Raman, scanning probe, et cetera? If yes, how did you find the same point? Um, say, uh, roughly same point uh, means, you know, that we are always aiming at the center of the flake because we want to uh, reduce the edge effect and things. So we are focusing on the center center area of the flake. So more or less, you know, that uh, we, are, we, are, we are in the same point. Excellent. Thank you very much for also answering this question. And with this, thank you once again, actually for this very nice presentation.